What's up everybody, Jonathan Thor from jthorpephoto.com here. Uh, first of all, it's the holiday season, so I wanna wish everyone a Merry Christmas, a Happy Holidays to you and your loved ones, whatever you may you know, celebrate and whatnot. Uh, quick update, I've been on a ton and ton and ton, a ton of travel. Uh, so I probably look very tired. Uh, I've been going kind of nonstop the last two months and I have about a week off uh, this week. Uh, this being Monday, December 20th, I think it is. Um, or 19th, 20th, it's 20th. Um, so I've been kind of going crazy and, and, and working really, really just a lot. Uh, so it's nice to have some downtime and to make a video for everyone to talk about a new lens I just received from my uh, lens sponsor, Tamron. That's something I'm extremely excited about. Uh, to Before we get into that lens, I wanna give a, a, a little bit of a backtrack about what cameras I am shooting with for the for the future, in the future. Because um, I've made a pretty big switch and I've been pretty uh, vocal about it on my social. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about what I switched to, why I switched, all that stuff. Uh, so for a long time, I've always been interested in medium format. It's in the commercial world, it is kind of the industry standard, you know, uh, high megapixel, big sensor, it's just what's expected of you. And, you know, it's, medium format's a very expensive uh, system to get involved with. Uh, it's very easy to get into a camera that's like, I don't even know, top of my head, 20, 30,000 bucks. Um, and then lenses on top of that and you know, so forth. It gets to be a really, really expensive uh, system. Uh, over the last year or so, I've been going back and forth and testing uh, different cameras. Now I've been shooting Canon for, I would say 10 years, if not maybe a little bit less, maybe like eight years. Uh, I started out with like a Pentax, I think. And then I had a couple Nikon cameras early on. Like a, my very first camera was a Nikon D40. Um, then I've gone to, I had a D200, D300. Um, and then I started in the Canon series with the 5D original, then 5D Mark II. Never had a 5D Mark III, went to a 6D for a while. And I love the 6D, that is one of the best values uh, for a full frame camera, even though it's not mirrorless you can get. You can get some full frame mirrorless cheaper now, but that was just an awesome, awesome, awesome camera. And then I had a 6D Mark II for a minute. Didn't love that. Jump ship to Sony. Uh, shot with Sony for like a year, year and a half, I think it was, an A7, A7R3 or A7R4 and an A7, I think at the time, I don't remember what those bodies were. <clears throat> and then I went back to Canon, uh, for a lot of reasons. I just, I loved Canon's color, I loved Canon's menu system and their usability and all the stuff that we've already heard. Uh, so I went back to Canon and I was with Canon for about two or three years until I started really looking into a different camera system. Um, I brought some cameras out here, and these are the cameras I'm using going forward. And there is a Canon here. I do have a, a little uh, RP that I'll talk about a little bit. So, I was testing cameras, and I started testing with the, the GFX uh, 100. And this is Fuji's medium format 102 megapixel beast. And as much as I didn't want to love it, I loved this camera so, so much. So, went all in, and now I'm shooting Fuji for 75 to 80% to of my work. Um, still using Canon cinema bodies uh, for video. I'm shooting this on the, uh, the C70 right now. Um, however, I did shoot video on this recently, and I was very, very, very impressed. So, as of now, the Canon cinema bodies are staying. But this matched up so, so well with the C70 footage. The F-Log looked really great with the C-Log stuff, if you grade it correctly. So, uh, I am a Tamron image master, which means I'm using Tamron glass, which means I'm using all EF mount lenses on the digital, on the, on the Fuji, the GFX 100, which is a large sensor. And you can see I have an adapter on here. This is the Fringer, or Fringer, however you say it. Uh, EF GFX Pro, gives you an aperture ring to, for your lens as well. Uh, with this adapter, all of my Tamron EF glass works flawlessly. Aside from one little thing, the 24 to 70 has a little bit of vignetting in the corner. But the beautiful thing about these bodies is you can switch them to a full frame mode. And at that point, all the glass covers fully, no big deal. Um, all the primes work incredibly well with this system. 
uh, the, the 15 to 30, which is, is really, really awesome, works super well. You have to zoom it in to about 17 millimeters to get it to cover the full frame of the, the sensor. But once you do that, you're 100% good to go. Uh, so I've been really, really happy uh, with this camera and what it can provide me. Now, because I had switched to the GFX 100, I wanted a backup camera that could still give me the same colors. I didn't want to have to like worry about, you know, two camera systems and two cameras that look a little bit different from each other. So to back up to that, I started looking into their X models and their H models and whatnot, and I settled on the X-H1. Now, the reason I got the X-H1 Honestly, it was just an ergonomic thing. I have these hand straps hanging off. I took them off so they would sit up on the table here. Um, it's an ergonomic choice. A lot of, I'm, a, I'm tall, I'm six foot four, got big hands. And a lot of the, the um, like the X-T3s, X-T4s, those bodies, kind of small and there's not really comfortable to hold. This has a nice firm grip on it, especially with the battery grip. Uh, this feels like a DSLR in my hands, uh, but still a bit small, a little bit lighter. And I'm getting the same color science across both bodies. Now, this also I'm using with an adapter. This is another Fringer adapter. This is the EF to FX Pro 2. Also gives you an aperture ring just like the other one does. But I've had not the best of results with this adapter. And I've tried a couple. And this is the best one you can get for sure. But when mounting an EF lens on this, focus hunts a little bit. Um, I don't know, it's just not like snappy, like I thought. And I've also never used any native uh, Fuji glass. I've adapted from day one. So I don't really know how well this, this compares to a Fuji, uh, a Fuji native. Um, I don't know if a Fuji native lens hunts uh, or not the way that this one does, but it does. I can throw, I have the, the Tamron 24-70 right here. This is the newer one. And I can throw this on there. And just sitting here in my living room, I'll just try to focus on something. Oh, I'm gonna turn on autofocus. And it's, see it's hunting right there. And then it finds it. You can, you can probably hear the beep. That's good, and we're gonna throw it over there. That's good, we'll go back here. And then it's hunting again. So it's hunting a lot. It's just not snoo super snappy the way I would prefer it to be. Also, these bodies are crop sensors, and these are all full frame lenses. So I'm not getting a true 24 to 70. I'm getting whatever that equivalent is, which is like, I don't know, uh, 37 or 38 to like a 105 or something, which is kind of a usable thing. It's kind of cool. Uh, I do have a speed booster for this, which works absolutely terribly. Uh, <laughs> the speed booster was awful. Focus was hunting like crazy and just didn't work. So this is my best bet, which I was kind of bummed about. So I needed another body for like the easy, easy, easy gigs. Like they're just a run and gun, like super quick, doesn't take a lot of setup, whatever. So I threw an RP back in my, my uh, camera bag, which is a really cool little uh, full frame mirrorless camera. In uh, this, I can throw a lens on this and this will work all day long, no big deal. So this is kind of like the toss away camera. That is until I got this lens uh, from Tamron. So now I have a native mount lens for the Fuji system. So I might not even need this anymore. But I do like this little RP. It's like 800 bucks if you buy one used. Uh, feels good in your hands, even though it is really, really tiny, but it gets the job done whenever you need to. So I'll put that over here. And then finally, I have the uh, X, X-E3. This is my walk around camera. This is what I keep in on my, my shoulder if I'm just going out. Uh, I don't want to say street photography because I don't really shoot a lot of that stuff, but I'm trying to use this over my iPhone. And this has a little grip on it and a shutter release and a thumb uh, thing on the back of it. So just, this feels good in my hands. And this is, I think the same sensor as the X-H1. So similar body, just a smaller compact, uh, uh, or I'm sorry, similar sensor, smaller, uh, smaller compact body. And for some reason, I feel like the autofocus in this one works better than the X-H1. I'm not 100% sure, but I could take either one of these two a shoot and get the job done. All the, it's a crop sensor, whatever. But the cool thing about, again, about that GFX 100 is I have an option for medium format with this. I also have an option for full frame with this. And now I have a crop sensor to back it up, which is always a nice little change, a uh, nice touch because you get different characteristics of each one. So all that to be said, let's get into this. I received this about three days ago. This is the Tamron 18 to 300, uh, 3.5 to 6.3 DI 
uh, 3AVC VXD for the Fuji X mount. And I think Tamron is one of the only, if not the only ones making a, a third party company making a true autofocus um, lens for the X-Mount. And when I say one of the only ones, one of the, the big three, I mean, I'm not gonna say that the, you know, the companies that we know about, but they're one of the bigger companies making a lens for this mount. Now, who is this lens for? Well, with such a, such a massive zoom of 18 to 300, a lot of different people are going to be able to use this lens. Like this can be, you know, used for nature, wildlife, all that kind of stuff. Cause you do have a wide angle lens at 18, uh, zooming in for bird shooting at 300 millimeters. I don't shoot any of that stuff. I'm a studio shooter for predominantly. So this, and most of my work is at like that F8 number, especially in studio. So the fact that this is a 3563, not a huge deal to me. Uh, but this will be my true backup to that other Fuji body. So we're gonna take this out of the box here. Sorry about the loudness, because I'm sure this is coming through my microphone crazy loud right now. And I haven't opened this yet. I just took it out of the shipping box. I've been, I was on travel when this lens showed up. So first time seeing it, first time holding it as well. There we go. 18 to 300. I don't know if it's focusing on me or my face right now because I can't really see the screen, but there you go. Uh, first impressions feels good. Uh, it's very lightweight. <laughs> it's got a very long zoom on it. Uh, it's got a little uh, lock here so the lens doesn't creep on you. But it feels good in your hands. It feels like it's gonna be a good compliment to the Fuji series. Uh, let's throw it on the body and just see what we got here. So I gotta take this adapter off. And again, I've never used a, and it feels good on the body. Before I get into it, that feels pretty balanced. It feels like, at least on this body, that feels like a lens that kind of belongs on there. It's got a lens hood. We'll take this off here. Let me cover this up. And we'll throw our lens hood on, because why not? And there we go. So like I said, it feels great on the body, at least on this X-H1. Uh, we'll, we'll throw it on the, the XE as well. It's, it's probably kind of big for this body as far as the zoom range, but we'll throw it on there and see how it feels. Um, uh, let's turn it on and see what we got here. Now, I don't have a memory card in this, so I'm gonna just be looking at the focus, whatever, and seeing how well it focuses compared to that 2470. So I'll throw something over here in my living room, super quick there, and we'll go back to you. Now this is where it was, it was hunting like crazy. And I'm focusing on the hot shoe of the GFX here. And that is super fast. Zooming in. I don't know what the, what the minimal focus range is here, but it's pretty close. So where am I at here? I'm at 70 and it is just nail and focus. No problem whatsoever. I don't think you can hear that beep, but here I'll try to, let's throw it out of focus here. I'll be quiet this time. So focusing on the X-A3 here, I'll bring it to my microphone. There we go. Super quick to focus. That's crazy. So if this is how native Fuji glass mounts, then that's awesome. That's super impressive uh, because that focus is beautiful. I haven't taken any shots of this yet, obviously, because I just opened it. But I will be doing that this afternoon, just, just seeing what it does here. But yeah, the focus is super snappy and quick. You guys can hear that beep, I'm assuming. Yeah, that's great. Really excited about this, because I've wanted... Adapting lenses to this system has never been super great, and I don't know what the difference is. The Fringer, 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 whatever they... Again, I don't know how to pronounce it on the GFX with the EF glass, with all the Tamron glass is phenomenal. The, the focus is super quick. Images are super, super sharp, way sharper than I ever would have considered them to be, um, but it works phenomenally. But some, for some reason on the X mount system, it doesn't work super, super great. So this is kind of exciting for me to have this and be able to use this as a, as a camera here finally. But you can hear how quick that's... And I'm just focusing on the C70 now 
and I have some cameras on display behind it. We're gonna zoom it all the way in and see how the focus is again, and it's spot on. That's great news. That's so fantastic. This is working so well. But again, I wanted to be able to use this H1 in a, and I want to be able to trust it in a professional setting if I needed to. Um, for whatever reason that the GFX kind of gave me some problems. I wanted a camera that could back up to it. Uh, let's take it off and we'll throw it on the XE3 here. I don't know where the body cap is for this, so that's why I gotta keep throwing this thing back on there. I lose those. I lose caps <clears throat> fairly quickly. I hope there's a battery in this that's charged. I should have checked that before I started this, but whatever. We're doing it. Okay. Yes, we do have a battery. No memory card, that's fine. And let's see what we got here. I think I have it set to manual focus. There we go. And yeah, like I said, for some reason, I feel like, I really think this camera focuses faster than the X-H1. And I don't, I obviously have nothing to back that up with, but it just feels snappier to me and quicker. That's great. I have this set up for back button focus, but I turned it off because I just use, for this one I use a shutter, because it's a little bit easier to get to. Yeah, see that's, it's working super fast. Yeah, it's super nice. It doesn't feel terrible, it's a little big for this body, right? Because look how, look at the zoom, it's fucking, it's, it's huge. But, you know, if this was a travel camera, and I was going on a trip or something, I wanted that, that one lens that could probably get everything done, this is probably gonna be the one. Um, yeah, it's, I'm just, there's a hat over here I'm focusing on, and that's nailing it, and a picture on the wall, and that's nailing it quick. Yeah, super, super cool. It has vibration control in it as well. Uh, Tamron's vibration work is phenomenal. It always works really, really well. Um, especially for a body like this that's not stabilized, the X-H1 is stabilized, but this body is not. So being able to have a little bit of stabilization in it, I can actually see that motor start kicking in when the focus hits. A little wobbly and then boom, just freezes for me, no problem. Another thing is by using a, a lens like this that has a native mount, I get back my eye autofocus. Now with the adapter, it was really, really spotty. On the GFX, I autofocus is a little janky. Medium format's already already kind of difficult to focus on. But with the X uh, X mount stuff, the the I autofocus just wasn't working. I'm hoping that this works just as well, and I don't really have a way to test that right now. But I have a feeling it's going to work just as well, which is really really exciting because having that feature, once you're used to that, especially in the Canon stuff, it's phenomenal. Um, nothing's ever going to top the the dual pixel autofocus of a Canon. I don't think that you just their autofocus system is so, so, so good. But knowing I have something that's gonna get me close is, is super exciting. Um, I think that's it. Uh, again, 18 to 300 for the X mount. Um, there is some rumors that they're making some other lenses for this I've read about. Um, I don't have anything official and I don't wanna say anything official, but it looks like they're gonna be doing some more for this X mount uh, body, which is really, really exciting. I'm, ha I'm so happy that Tamron has garnered that relationship with Fuji. I think it's a really good relationship and I think it's gonna be something that's gonna, you know, help a lot of photographers and it's a good, it's two really great brands coming together and I'm excited about that a lot. Um, so yeah, that should be it. Uh, I'm gonna mess around with this for the next couple of days and I'll post some photos on my socials. If you guys ever need anything, please reach out to me at jthorpephoto.com or on my Instagram at jthorpephoto. Always happy to hear from everyone. I hope everyone again has a really safe and fun holiday and a happy new year. Uh, after these last couple years, you know, I, I won't get into it because we all know what it is already. Uh, I just hope that it's better. I just hope it gets better because I think we're all tired of it. 